Konnichiwa. Today we're back with the uh, test of honor and we're going to be looking at painting Ashigari. Um, first things first, it is uh, Japanese July on um, the Facebook group Test of Honor the Samurai Miniatures game. If you're into Test of Honor and you're not uh, currently following that group, I suggest you have a good look. Plenty of resources. Graham Davey is, uh, is involved. Um, and uh, obviously great people, great content, so I can't recommend that enough. Uh, can I take this opportunity to as well thank you everybody for the support you've uh, given the channel and uh, obviously particularly in this case Test of Honour, my Test of Honour projects. Uh, but I just want to give a special mention to uh, Patrick uh, Lefevre, I, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he's been, a, he's been a great support. He's been sharing uh, some of the work we've done. He's shown a lot of interest and um, yeah, that can't appreciate it. Uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate that enough, so thank you very much. Right, and so today we're going to be painting some uh, Ashigari, specifically the commanders. We've got um, Standard Bearer, Musician, Sergeant, and Sergeant of Archery. Um, and so these these have been, um, I've done some conversion work on these. Let's move these that way, and we'll have a look at. This is a, a completed model so far. Now, although I'm not using them as these, I'd base these very heavily on the porpoise soldiers. I've got a bit of a fur covering salt just to add a bit of um, distinction. And there's his, uh, his headgear on the back there. But uh, yeah, so I'd, uh, I'd gone with um, the porpoise soldiers look because uh, I just wanted, to, if you've been following our um, campaign, it's meant to be sort of the story of a sort of resistance against um, a warmongering uh, clan lord and um, it's just the this uh, the Ronin has uh, scraped together his his motley crew who are going to uh, fight to to protect uh, the freedom of their lands, and uh, yeah, so this is what we're going to be working towards. I'm going to do all four of these now. Although I'll mainly look at just the one of them, mainly the uh, sergeant here. There's a uh, Naganata. The um, heads have all come from the samurai uh, mounted samurai box set. I wasn't using them on those, so I decided to get some use out of them here, make them a bit more uh, distinctive. The fur, the cape, the cloak, or whatever, however, would uh, is um, green stuffed, and uh, going with a naganata for a weapon instead. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to add some water down Abaddon Black over all the areas of uh, armour. And hair just to get started. Then we'll be giving that a dry brush afterwards. I'm going to do things a little backwards here. I'm going to be doing pretty much all the washes at the very end. It's not the brush I wanted. There is. Get a bit of water on this. I see I've been painting a lot of Judge Dread recently, so I've been getting through the black. So we've got a new pot today. So just go over the areas of armour with very watered down coat of black. Right, so with that dried on uh, all of these, I'll start off by giving it a dry brushing with a bit of scave and blight dinge just over the again over the areas of armour. Yeah, I think anyone who's seen my previous painting videos, I've generally gone with a bit for grey nowadays as a, a spray, but considering so much of this was black, it just seemed worth um, worth doing. Can't remember what the name of the actual spray was itself. I think it was Humbrol maybe, Humbrol Matte. So I did need to paint over it still, but um, to get the colour right, but yeah. yeah. That's good. The draw just needs a few of them clipping away. But... Right, yeah, so Japanese July is being run on the... Uh, the test of one on Facebook page. The idea is basically spend the week painting up a few uh, bits relevant to uh, well, samurai war gaming, I suppose. But yeah, in particularly uh, obviously test of honor in this case, and uh, take your photos on uh, Sunday and get them up there. So hopefully we'll have a bit of interest with that because it's always nice to see some models and it's especially uh, people's painted miniatures and it's especially good when uh, working towards something and everyone doing it together. Always enjoy that. Right, so we're doing this over 
as I said, all these armoured areas. And then uh, I'll get this done on everything, or on the uh, banner pole, I'll be keeping that in black. And uh, yeah, I know, uh, I don't do so much dry brushing, but um, obviously I'm going to be, I know it looks a bit dusty, but uh, what I'm going to be doing, hey, I think it adds to the sort of worn effect, I want this to sort of be older looking armour, but um, I think it also, um, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a wash afterwards over the, over all of this. So uh, that should bring it all together a bit uh, more cleanly when it's done. Right then, I'll do that on the rest of them and uh, move on to the next stage. This is the dry brushing stage uh, completed on all of the miniatures. Um, next up we're going to be adding the base layers. Now I'm not going to uh, want to get that done quite quick. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll just go through them now and then we'll have a quick uh, look at those being applied right and so um, firstly on the areas of cloth, the clothing, we're going to be applying some Xandri dust. Areas of flesh we're going to go with Bugman's Glow. For um, the buckles and the, uh, the sword uh, handles and other areas like that we're going to sort of um, the more sort of precious metal areas we're going to go with um, some Balthazar Gold. For the red areas which is mostly going to be um, the weapons go with the corn red the grey areas which actually is only going to be on this one uh, is on the fur we're going to go with some uh, Mechanica standard grey we're going to go with some uh, Arrakarth flesh for the white areas of the base going we've got dryad bark for the uh, the leather and finally, the uh, the weapon blades, we're going to have a bit of lead belcher. So the last little bit to do on here of the uh, the straps in dried bark, and then we'll be on to the next set of washes. There we go. Right then. So the next thing I'll be doing might. Standard brush is adding a layer of Reichlin flesh shade to the uh, areas of skin, and then for the uh, every other area, I'll be doing a sort of 
50-50 mix of Abrax Earth Shade and Lemian Medium. There's those. Okay. So first up, I'll do a bit of the Reutland Flesh. More of a shade. So just on the face and the hands. I'm just going to do this straight from the pot. Get a good blob on there and just move it around. Just make sure it gets into, mainly into the face and the recesses there. So we'll just finish off the mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Lemian Medium, which I apply to all the models. And we are now ready to move on which will be uh, the first uh, coatings of layer paints. Okay, so with all the uh, washes, the shades uh, applied and dried, we're going to move on to the uh, first um, the first layers. And for this, I'm going to be applying a shabti bone to the areas of clothing. This is over the, uh, the Zandri dust. So this is your uh, your standard sort of bone colour. So yeah. So these particular models I'm doing these are the plastic. Um, I think they're originally War Games Factory, and they uh, when they bought up by a uh, Warlord along with some other uh, sets of theirs. They um, kind of became the official plastics for Test of Honor. Now I know they're no longer uh, effectively the official ones because we moved on to some um, the, from footsaw miniatures and other ones that uh, they're running through the, uh, the site. Um, but obviously they still have these Ashigari troopers available. And they're in metal, but they're um, they're, they're very similar. So this this will still work. The techniques we're looking at will still work with those. And of course, if you're playing the, I think it's Warlords of Ezenhorn or Ezengard. I mean, it's not a game I'm familiar with, but I myself, but I know uh, the what was the original Warlord set for um, Test of Honor. I know the, I know the, uh, I've moved over to that game. So yeah. So any of these techniques you'll obviously be able to use on the sort of Ashigari in general and for other games. But I uh, do love my uh, test on it, so that's the game I'm sticking with for the moment. And obviously with the rules now to kind of pad the uh, games out and use larger forces, I think it's going to be uh, serving me well. So with that first layer applied to the clothing. Now we're going to move on to the next colour, which will be added to the white areas. Not be like that. And for that, I'll be using some uh, pallid witch flesh. So we'll still be going on the um, the I think they're socks, or the feet, the um, sword handles, the grips, and the uh, the flags where they where they are where they have them. Also on the archer, I've got some bands around his bow. And his arrowheads I'll be applying it to. Or Sergeant of Archery, should I say. Right then, get this on the brush. No, this this will take a few goes because this particular paint I'm using is a, a bit old now, so that'll do us. Put that on the brush. So start applying it so that I'm not adding any water to this because this is very uh, thin anyway, so. A bit redundant, but uh, yep. Okay, so just applying the last bit of white to the footwear, or at least part of the footwear. I keep calling them socks. I know they are socks, but there's sandals over something. So should I just say the white parts of the feet? There you go. Keep it simple. Right then. So that's done on everyone. So next up, we're going to have a little look at 
the skin and for that I'll be using uh, Kedin Flesh Tone. So I'm going to apply a little bit of water to this one just to make sure it's uh, bit of uh, wants to loosen up a little bit however I don't want it to run too much either so about getting the balance right use the tip of this brush so I'll start with the forehead let's just start and work it out from there So I'll just build that up around all the sort of main skin areas, leaving the recesses. And that'll be on uh, all six flesh areas, including the, uh, the hands and fingers. Okay, so just that last little bit. this for a second time now because because uh, I'm dampening it down a bit on the I need to do my second thin coat just touching around the edges and there we go so next up I'm going to be just applying a light coating of Dawnstone onto the fur and what I'm going to do this is not quite a dry brush but I'm going to get as little on there as I can, as much on there as I can, wipe a bit of it off and then we'll uh, just skim it over the top. Like this. Just a skimming. And we're clean that a little bit. So that's just giving a little coat on the fur. And that's that. So up next, I'm going to get the driver out. I'm going to get a bit of Runefang steel onto the blade. And then be moving onto the red. And uh, that should mean that if I do make any mistakes, I should easily be able to uh, erase them with that. Or cover them up, should I say? Or erase them. So this is just going on the blade. Oh, and that little bit at the bottom of the Naganata. Drop is a bit of a mess now, unfortunately. But as I said earlier, I don't use them often as I used to. So there you go, it's going to catch a bit of a. Okay, that should do us with that one. And so up next, I'll get a small amount of Evil Sun Scarlet. If I just get the brush out. Again, I'll just do a little tiny bit on here. We'll just run this up. One end. So we'll just have that on the one side where it's facing. A little bit of a highlight. And lastly, that's what I say lastly, just got some little bits of gold to do. Be 
using the detail brush which I will apply this will be um, Gehenna's Gold, you know I've never read that, that name before believe it or not and this will be very lightly applied to you guessed it the areas I've already done in gold So next up we'll be doing some more highlights and just for now I'm going to uh, get caught up with the rest of these models and uh, I'll be back when I've done that. Okay so with all that done I'm going to be adding a bit of Screaming Skull as an edge highlight and for that we apply it with an artificial brush. So this is just the absolute edges. A bit around there at the front. I should do us on that one. As I said, I'll be adding a little, but we'll come then. I won't say no, say when we come to it. So just as a little, so there you go, that's the kind of thing. Okay, so we'll add. Should do us with that. So <clears throat> next up, I'll add a little bit to the. Uh, should we do the hair? Let's do the hair. This will just be a bit of a. Ashing grey. Let's put a bit too much on there, so I'll get rid of that. To be applying this little patches on the top here, where the light is. Just, so just a few strands there, just around the edge. Don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up, but uh, yeah, just so I know we've got a bit on. I think I'll just uh, get caught up on the rest of the models. And I'll be right back. Right, so with that done on all of them, I'm going to go a little bit of Kislev flesh into the extreme edges of the face, on the nose, bottom lip, around the eyebrows and fingertips, things like that. A few little bits on the fingertips. Absolutely little bits, and we are away. Right, so that's the flesh uh, tones done. And now we're going to move on to the <coughs> grey of his cloak. Cloak fur, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to be using a bit of. Well, I'm using Fortress Grey for this. Forgive me, I uh, don't know the name of the current version off the top of my head. However, I will leave a full list of paints in the comp in the uh, description below. And I'll make sure the actual name is in there. So I'm just going to add a few little flecks of this around the edge. The flesh done. We're now onto the areas of grey on his uh, the last little highlight of grey on his uh, fur. I'm using a fortress grey for this. Forgive me that the uh, name of the current paint escapes me at the moment. However, 
I will be sure to leave the names of all the paints in the comment section below. So uh, you can have a look there, I'll make sure it's the right name in there. So with the grey done, it's now time to add a bit of white scar to, surprise surprise, the areas of white. Now this is extreme highlighting, so this is just going to go on. Just a few little spots here and there, I'll do this. Just using a artificial brush or detail brush for now. But when I move on to some of the uh, areas of the flags, I'll be moving on to a standard brush. Moving on to the larger brush. Can we just add a bit of the white onto the banner? Or flag, or whatever you want to call it. Skim this over as best I can. Not the easiest way to pick out the the areas, and then I'll fill them in once that's done. So with that all done, the next thing to do will be to add a bit of Bane Blade Brown to the areas of leather, things like the straps. Well, it's the leather areas that aren't the armor. So there be the straps and the weapon uh, sheaths. In fact, we'll start with those. So just on the top, just run it over the area where it's lit up. And then uh, a little bit dotted around on the uh, footwear. Right, so with all the straps done, the uh, final phase to do is just to add a little bit to the areas of, well, to the straps again, and the areas of clothing, to add a little bit of uh, the Agrax and Lemon Medium mix, just to take away uh, the, stark, uh, the starkness of the highlights. So there is the uh, completed model. I'm, I've got to basically just do the uh, couple of details on the banner and um, the bases, but uh, I will do those uh, off screen um, because I know we're all going to have our own ways of doing that and you know our own ways of doing well doing what we want with the uh, banners. If you're using banners at all, if you are. Using this guide for poor soldiers, um, they generally they they didn't obviously have them, but um, so I'm not, not although they are poor soldiers, I'm not using them that way. Okay, so I'll uh, be right back with the finished article and a bit of a showcase of the army so far. Right then, and with all those completed and based up, they're ready to be added to the rest of the force or the force so far. The rest of the force so far. Um, while I was doing that, I actually got some uh, red leaves delivered. Um, so I've added those to the base. Um, I think those look pretty cool. Uh, I got the idea from uh, watching the um, the gameplay trailers for Ghost of Tsushima for the PS4. That's coming out this month. I'm uh, really looking forward to that. That'll uh, certainly get my uh, creative juices going with the Ghost Test of Honor, no doubt. Um, also, I know what else you're thinking. Where does he get his original ideas for those banners? Well... I do think the bright uh, white and red of the Japanese flag goes uh, so well with this um, arm, uh, with these sort of drab colours I'm using so far, and um, I, I, they're not a particular clan, so uh, I just thought you know rather than it, it, it's, it's as good a flag to use as any, and um, as I add different colour uh, units to this, as you know different uh, factions joining the fray, um, I just thought what better flag to unite an army than what will one day be the national flag, right? And so that's. Uh, everything from me until next time i'm working on some um so high monks at the moment so uh look out for a bit of a video on them uh, until then i uh, hope you've enjoyed it we're hoping to get um, more battle reports up and running as soon as the whole uh, covid uh, business is over as i hope uh, everyone's keeping safe 
And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more in the future. Until then, thank you very much and goodbye.